Oceans cover 75% of the Earth's surface, and from the surface to the deeps, they're inhabited by an immense variety of organisms. Efficient communication is of paramount importance for many of the ocean's inhabitants. But how do organisms communicate underwater? Visual signals aren't always a good idea. In shallow water it can be difficult because of poor visibility, while the open ocean is dark below 200 metres and a pitch black below one kilometre. Chemical signals aren't always effective. Waves, turbulence and currents can dissipate them over a short distance. So what about sound? Water is 800 times denser than air, sound travels five times faster and aquatic animals have evolved in an ocean of sound created by natural physical sources or by other animals which is known as the ambient sea noise. These factors are invaluable for aquatic animals that rely on sound to communicate, orientate and survive. A lot of aquatic species rely on sound during activities crucial for their survival when searching for and assessing the quality of potential mates, searching for individuals or groups in schools and shoals, fighting for territory or gauging the strength of rivals. The acoustic soundscape is like a fingerprint of the underwater world and a lot of animals, simply by listening to it, can better understand the location of prey or specific territory for reproduction or settlement. Several fish species are vocal. Usually their sounds are very short and very low in frequency and intensity and, in some cases, they sing in chorus. The chorus of the brown meagre is a series of drum sounds emitted by many individuals singing together, probably in order to aggregate and synchronise their reproduction. In fish, sound production is especially conspicuous during the breeding season and is typically related to agonistic interaction and mating activities. The fish also rely on sound for food competition, homing, navigation and for gaining information about who and what surrounds them. Sounds are exploited even when it comes to avoiding predators. The herring and some coupeid fish, for example, react with an immediate dispersal response to the sound of predators like orca. Marine mammals are the ocean's famous singers. As with many fish, they emit sounds for communication purposes, during mating, territorial defence and social interactions in general, but all tooth cetaceans have evolved a very sensitive sixth sense. They can use sounds for lighting up even the darkest of oceans. These animals dive very deep when searching for food, locating prey in a pitch black environment using echolocation via click sounds. A click is a very short and loud sound. Tooth cetaceans are able to emit clicks in extremely fast repetition, even hundreds per second. Dolphins emit very high frequency clicks and they are able to locate and track tiny prey species such as hagfish. Sperm whales, however, hunt bigger prey like giant squid and locate them hundreds of metres below the surface thanks to lower frequency clicks. Although the ocean has always been a noisy place, man's contribution to ambient sea noise has radically escalated in the last 50 years. The impact of this noise pollution cannot be ignored. In the acoustic range occupied by commercial ships, deep water background noise is growing by around 3 to 5 decibels per decade and in some areas near the coast the sound is several orders of magnitude higher than in less urbanised water. Sources of noise in the underwater world include military activity and seismic surveys, but a big contribution is due to boat traffic and activities related to energy exploitation by oil and gas companies or new renewable energy companies. Seismic surveys utilise arrays of air guns to produce powerful, pulsed and very loud sound waves. The extent of this activity, used by both academic geologists and the oil and gas industry in its search for new hydrocarbon deposits, continues to increase. The most common anthropogenic source of low frequency noise is shipping. The rumble of engines, propellers and other commercial shipping noises can be heard in virtually every corner of the ocean. In a world in which 80% of global trading takes place at sea, the number of merchant ships has tripled in the last 75 years and the number of recreational boats keeps increasing as well. Vessel noise in coastal areas has become a form of chronic, constant pollution. Also, the increased development of renewable energy has led to construction of offshore wind farms with high-powered turbines generating several megawatts of electrical power. Offshore wind farms are being built worldwide in coastal waters. Noise is being emitted both in the construction phase, while piling and drilling the foundations, as well as during the electricity generation itself. The effects of anthropogenic noise on aquatic animals depend on noise characteristics such as volume, duration and frequency, but as well on the hearing abilities of the species. These effects range from the undetectable sublethal behavioural changes to more dramatic physiological effects such as deafness and even death. 
Scientists have linked the use of military sonar to strandings in marine mammals, however, the precise link between seismic surveys and cetacean strandings is not yet completely clear. Seismic surveys have been proved to severely affect fish distribution, local abundance and catch rates, and can cause body malformation in juvenile marine invertebrates. If they can, animals try to escape from the noise, possibly sacrificing activities such as feeding and mating. Avoidance reaction to vessel noise has been observed in several fish species such as cod, herring, rudd and roach. But if they can't escape, physiological effects can be expected. Exposure to noise causes stress to several fish species. Their heartbeats quicken, they move more and their hormonal stress levels rise regardless of their hearing sensitivities. Anthropogenic noise can also have other physiological effects. The brown shrimp, for example, grows slower, reproduces less and its mortality rate increases. Also, some fish species grow slower and produce less viable eggs. Anthropogenic noise from sonar, shipping or seismic activity is mainly concentrated in the sub-1000 Hz frequency range within which fish and sea turtles are most sensitive and in which mammals are also sensitive. When the anthropogenic noise volume increases, an immediate physiological response has been noticed in several species. A threshold shift whereby organisms are temporarily less sensitive to sound, similar to the after effects of attending a loud concert. However, if the noise is too loud or the time of exposure prolonged, permanent hearing damage can result. Sometimes, with very loud sounds like the ones used in military activities or seismic surveys, this damage can be so severe as to make animals literally deaf, or worse, dead. The continuous and increasing level of anthropogenic noise can also make it impossible for animals to hear important signals, like predatory noises or mating calls. As happens to us when we try to converse in a noisy place, animals in a loud environment simply do not hear each other, and communication is difficult if not impossible. If the communication was orientated to finding a mate, this may lead to an unhappy ending. Some fish have shown some sort of vocal compensation in such situations. This is basically the same strategy as we would adopt in noisy environments, repeating the message over and over, sometimes more loudly. Anthropogenic noise is now recognised as a significant pollutant in the marine environment, and the potential consequences for animal survival are of international concern. Some species may acclimatise to noise after chronic exposure, whereas others may struggle to develop and survive. Raising our awareness to the problem of underwater noise pollution can help us to lower anthropogenic volume in the oceans. Aquatic animals would surely thank us for it.